Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is video nine of our series on rediscovering the C programming language. In this video, uh, we're gonna pick up where we left off with arrays and pointers, and we'll talk about uh, passing by uh, value or passing by reference. So in functions that we've written before, uh, we've passed a value in to that function and we've done something with it, whether it was to print it out uh, or do some arithmetic or whatever. Um, and so sometimes that makes sense. Uh, we want to pass it in, do something with it. We don't want uh, a change to that uh, value uh, to affect the calling program. Um, but other times, maybe we do want to change that value. Um, or in the case of like an array, uh, you know, we only allocated maybe uh, five elements of a, an integer array, which turned out to be 20 bytes. What happens if that was a hundred elements or a thousand elements? We don't want to pass that huge chunk of data uh, into a program. Instead, uh, we want to pass the address of the array into the function and then we'll use it from there, right? Um, and that is more efficient to do so, um, but it also opens up our array potentially to changes. And we, we can kind of uh, work with that a bit um, to try to minimize those things, but essentially we can either pass the value itself or we can pass the memory address of where that value is, right? And so that's really the, the point between pass by value and pass by reference. So I have two articles listed here, one of which shows uh, how to pass by reference inside of the C programming language. Okay, and so what we might see, they wrote a function called swap and that function receives a pointer and they name it X and it receives a pointer and they name it Y, and it swaps between the two. So what we should expect then in the main program, the calling program, is they have a local X or a local A and a local B. And by passing the address of, because they're using ampersand here, the address of A and the address of B, what the uh, swap function receives is two addresses. And because they end up swapping the values uh, between those two addresses, we should see that A and B, their values swap, right? And that's, you know, what they wanted here. Uh, and, and again, they use it in, the, uh, in a pass by reference manner. Had they just passed in A or just passed in B, they would have done the swap down here uh, obviously, it would have looked a little bit different because you wouldn't have had these uh, the dereference operator. Um, but essentially, they would have done the swap here. Everything looked fine, but in the calling function, nothing would have changed. But because they're passing the memory addresses, they're able to actually affect the calling function. Okay, and so we'll see that um, if we, uh, you know go to an example, we can kind of see how we can pass in memory addresses. Now, I'm gonna hit it from a, a, a slightly different angle uh, than they did in the, the swap uh, portion, but I think you'll see it, it's very similar. So if we kind of work with some of the arrays that we did in the last video, we'll see how they automatically can kind of get turned into pointers as we receive them in uh, another function. And then additionally, we'll be able to use pass by reference uh, to pull additional uh, data, or not data, but uh, calculations and, or results out of that function and return them uh, back to our calling function. So let's uh, call this um, print array. All right, so in here, I'm gonna go pound include our stdo.h that we're used to pulling in for print a, for printf. We'll have int main, I'm not gonna pass anything in. And I'm gonna have two arrays here. So my first array is just gonna be an array of numbers, right? I'm not gonna say how many elements it is because it, it will be able to figure out that I'm going to pass it one, 
Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So I'm going to give it all of these values. And so it's going to store those uh, in the array. And then I'm going to have an array of primes inside of that. And so we should see uh, two, uh, three, five, and seven, right? So those are all the prime numbers inside of, of that. And we should be good. Now, we could print them out and I could write uh, two for loops to go across them. But instead, I, I only want to write one for loop and I'll put that in its own function uh, so that all I have to do is print array and pass in numbers and then print array and I want to pass in primes. Okay, so we already know from our uh, previous uh, video on arrays and pointers that I can do something like this. I can do printf and I can do size of and this would be uh, what are we, we're going to do numbers here percent uh, ld size of numbers and if I copy that we can make this primes and I can make this primes we should expect those two lines to work so it'll tell us how many bytes it allocated for numbers and how many bytes it allocated for primes and if we wanted to we can do size of int um, because that will tell us essentially the number of elements inside oops inside of those arrays all right so instead of being size of numbers, we'll call it elements, numbers, elements, primes. Oops. All right, so we should be good there. For now, let's comment out those lines just to make sure the above works. Zero. Close that. Uh, and we'll go ahead and write it. So let's go ahead and make this. We called it array. So make, no, we called it print, didn't we? Print array. So make print array. Okay, so that's good. So we have nine elements in the first one and four elements in the second one. All right, so nine and four. So that makes sense. So we know that works there. Now we have this print array and we're gonna, basically have a function called print array um, it's going to take in an int array uh, and so essentially our function is going to look like that right so if I come down here oops we have our print array and I'm actually going to write it here. And so in this case, I'm just gonna do something like this. I'm gonna to try to replicate what I did up here so that I can see the number of elements that are coming into my function, right? I was able to do that in the main function. So you would think I would be able to do that down here. All right, so size of, all right. So the only thing we've changed is we're doing size of array instead of size of numbers and primes because that's what we're naming it when it comes into the function. So I'll write that. I'm gonna compile and it's gonna throw a fit. So where is it throwing fit? Probably because I mistyped a few things here. Data definition has no time. Oh. All right, I didn't actually tell it. We're not going to return anything currently from our function. So our function is void, so it doesn't return anything. Clear my screen. Make primer. Okay. Or make print array. Okay, so what is it telling us now? 
All right, size of an array function parameter array will return size of int star. Okay, so it's saying that this size of array isn't gonna quite work the way we thought it would. But let's go ahead and try and run our print array. And in fact, we get elements array two, elements array two. Well, that doesn't make sense. It had nine elements and it had four elements. Well, this is because instead of receiving the entire array here, what it's actually receiving is a pointer to the array, right? The array under the hood is just, uh, it just holds a memory address that points to the first element of the array. And that makes sense up in the main function, but when we pass it to print array, the size of this operator is a, um, is essentially a macro that gets executed during compilation. Uh, and so prior to compiling, it doesn't know if it's receiving numbers. It doesn't know if it's receiving prime. All it knows is it's receiving a pointer. And so the best thing that it can determine is size of, just like size of int, it says, well, an integer is four bytes. It's saying, uh, in this case, a pointer is two bytes. So we don't get, you know, the actual array size, we get the pointer size, right? Because it's not interpreting interpreting this as necessarily an array where it can count the number of elements. The size of, in this case, it's just counting the size of the pointer itself. And this is because, you know, this somewhat makes sense, again, because it doesn't know during compilation, are you passing in numbers or primes? Because those are two totally different sizes. So it bases its information on just the fact that it's receiving an address, a pointer, right? Um, and so this kind of stuff doesn't necessarily work anymore in the function. And so instead of doing something like this, we need to know how many elements are in this array. And so we're gonna have to pass that uh, by value into uh, our print array function. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy this. Let's start at the comma. Yank that, paste it, oops, paste, man, if I could type today. All right, so I got an extra space there, but that's all right, no, I don't. Let's see if I can't, nope, because I deleted that space, and that's now copied for me, so I'll yank that one, paste it. Now, that here, we got primes. So now we're gonna send it the address of numbers and the address of primes. And then we're also gonna send it the number of elements in those um, arrays, right? Which means I need to adjust it up here. Let's go ahead and uh, int elements. Int elements. Print F, and then we'll do address percent P, and we'll do elements. Oh no, we're gonna do void star array. So in our last video, we used this kind of setup to where we're saying, okay, array is an array, but essentially it's an address, a pointer, and we're gonna say that that is a void pointer because percent p expects a void pointer right and so we have to cast it as a void pointer in this case and then we'll print f elements um, this should be percent d okay so we're going to check out the address of it and we're going to check out um, the number of elements coming in so if I rebuild that, I rerun it, uh, 
This is what we had before. And now I'm getting the address of numbers in. And I also know the number of elements now. I'm getting the address of primes and the number of elements in primes, okay? So now we can start to use that a little bit. So we know that works. So what we can do is then do a for loop, just like we've been doing in some of our other videos. We'll start at the zeroth element and we'll go up to elements. And we'll go ahead and print out our value. Uh, so these are integers, so percent %d. Uh, we'll give a space after it so that we can print it all on one line. And this will be array index i. We'll close that out. And then we'll follow it up with just a carriage return for a new line. And so it should print nicely. Each element inside of the array with uh, carriage return. So we'll make print array and it works. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, five, and seven. So that's cool. Uh, now we uh, can tell um, that um, we're able to access each of those individual items. Now what would happen then if um, we had a pointer and this pointer was null and for whatever reason it wasn't supposed to be null it was actually supposed to be an array and uh, we thought it was gonna hold a couple of values What's gonna end up happening is we're gonna pass that null value into our print array. Our print array says, well, you said there were two elements in it. So it's gonna to try to dereference into there, but because it doesn't point anywhere, we're gonna get a segmentation fault, right? And this is quite common as we're working with some of our data structures where we're essentially building things, um, we are going to find out that we need to be careful before we reach into something, uh, especially in this context, that I can't guarantee, you know, that that element came to me correctly, right? So one of the things I can do is if null is equal to array, f, print f, and if I look over here, so just like we had a, a printf function, there's an f printf function that allows me to, instead of writing my message out straight to the console, I can write it to a, a specific stream. So in my case, I'm gonna write it to standard error. So that if I'm capturing errors um, to see if any of my programs, you know, have errored out, you know, or, or something like that. Um, I'm able to kind of see that right away. So standard error, I'll say array is null. And I'll just return. So that um, I don't end up going, going down here and trying to dereference into it. Okay. Now, I could have put this if array is equal to null, uh, but I've kind of gotten to the habit of putting the value that cannot change in the front, so that if I accidentally mistyped and I put uh, array equals null instead of array with the double equals, so it's doing that equality check, um, I don't end up making an assignment to A. I'm still doing an evaluation, right? So. Most of the time your compilers will flag it anyway, even if you make that mistake. Um, but I have over the years just gotten to the habit of doing this. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is. So it looks a little weird, um, but it keeps me from sometimes shooting myself in the foot. So now when we rebuild and run it, uh, I just get an output that says array is null, right? And this is, actually going to standard error, not uh, standard out, 
although it still displays on my terminal, I could uh, take, uh, there's a bash thing that allows you to pipe uh, standard error, which is uh, uh, equal to two in our case. Um, I could send this to dev slash null. And in fact, I then don't see that. But if I wanted to, you know, send that into uh, a file, some file, I now have a file that contains all of my errors, right? So anyway, I like to do things like that so that if I know I'm receiving an address into a function, I first make sure that that address actually points to something instead of null so that before I reach into it, you know, I, I know that it at least points somewhere, right? Okay, so that's at least one thing we need to be aware of in our arrays and that's uh, the whole size of not working down here. That's another thing we need to be aware of uh, in arrays. So now I'm going to write one more function and this function is going to basically sum it out. Um, so we'll call we'll call this one just sum, and I'll pass in numbers. And we might as well just copy this whole thing. So let's see. And I'm going to call this one sum. All right. And it's gonna add up the values, so that's fine. So it's gonna look very similar to this, except now we're returning an integer. Uh, we're still passing in our array, we're still passing in the number of elements, okay? And I can print f sum percent d uh, val. I'll copy that, paste it in there. All right. So now we have a function called sum that's going to essentially look very similar to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it just so that we can kind of see. Now we've called it sum instead of printing. going to have int sum, we'll call this val equals zero, val plus equals ray i. And then we're going to return val. We need to return it up here. Um, so we're just going to say, let me we'll put val up here and we'll return val here as well. Come on. Hitting too many buttons. All right. So essentially, we're still going to check to see if our array points to a null value. If it doesn't point to a null value, we're going to come down here and we're gonna add each of the individual elements to val and return it, all right? And I need to change this because it now returns an integer. And so hopefully, if I've typed everything correctly, make, uh, what did I call this thing? I've already forgotten. Make print array. All right, so, I do have an issue, conflicting type for print array, meaning that I forgot to change this to actual sum, all right? Make print array, all right, what is it saying? Val undeclared first use, probably because I didn't actually declare it. So let's declare it up here. We'll say int val, all right? And make it. And it works, so let's, and I run it. So it looks like I passed in 
the same thing twice, but it was able to uh, print the sum. All right, so let's make sure that I'm actually doing it correctly. Sum, let's do primes. Primes. And rebuild, or recompile, and rerun, and there, that works. So we get 45 and 17. So we're able to add these items up. Now, what would happen then if I wanted my sum function to be able to determine whether or not an error occurred? I know in the context of this, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but maybe our function uh, was a little bit more complicated than just adding up some, some elements. We were already returning an integer, so maybe that integer value that we return should actually be um, some type of status code. So in this case, we're going to say if there's an error, um, we're going we're going to return negative one, okay? And if nothing went wrong, we're going to return zero, okay? So that makes sense uh, given our return values, except for the fact that well, then how am I going to get my value back out of it? Well, one of the things I can do then is pass by reference. So int star val, right? So now I don't have to declare a value inside of here, but what I can do is star val equals zero. So I'm gonna start it at zero, but I also wanna check, does val actually point somewhere? So, uh, or val null equal to val. Right, or val is equal to null. However, you're more comfortable writing. But now we'll say, oh, come on, I'm getting stuff all over the keyboard here. So let's say pointer is null. It's fine. So we're gonna output if val is uh, points to null, or if array points to null. Either way, I can no longer. Uh, execute the function, so I'm going to return the negative one. Otherwise, I'm going to start val out at zero. And then now, because val is a pointer, I need to dereference val, and then I can start adding to it. All right. I don't uh, have to worry about sending val back because val is a pointer. So whatever uh, was sent to me, that's where uh, Val will get adjusted. So I need to change this up here. Int uh, star. And really when you're kind of uh, declaring these up here, they don't need to know what you're gonna call things. They just need to know the data type, right? So I know I'm sending in an int integer array, or literally I can just do int star because I'm sending in an address, sending in an integer, integer, and in this case I'm sending in another address, okay? So if I come down to my sum function, I have this val, instead I'm also going to make int uh, status, right? So this is our status code. So now our status is there, or is there, status. And in our case, I'm gonna send it ampersand val. So I'm gonna send it the address of val. And I should be good, assuming I typed everything correctly. So what does it look like now? I still have my sum function. It still takes in my uh, array, which is really just sending the address of the array. I still have the number of elements in that array, go array going there. But now I'm sending the address of val to that function. So as that function makes changes to val, it's actually 
changing val inside of this function. And, um, and so we should be able to print it out. Now, I don't remember because I think I've recorded this twice now. Uh, but judging by the tabs I have open, this second link that I've included in the readme file is talking about stack-based memory. So essentially, if we think of this as our main function and all of the variables we've allocated uh, on it, as we call a new function, it allocates a new stack for those local variables, right? But in my case, what I'm doing instead of, of saving the values inside of that function, what I actually have is a pointer that points down to the address where this thing lives and I'm adjusting it down here, right? So that in my main function, I'm adjusting this local copy of val when I write to it inside of sum. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. I'm taking the address of val, passing it in. I receive it as an address. So when I write to it by dereferencing into it, I'm able to adjust the original val in the main function. And so if I've done everything correctly, uh, let's see, it says I haven't used status, which is fine. If I go up just for completeness, we can print F, we'll say status. I could put that in front of that one as well. And so now we should be clean. And what I see is that in fact, uh, zero was returned as my status and I still got my value back out. Zero was returned as my status code and my val was returned as well, right? Because I passed this by reference. Now, what would happen then if I tried to do the same thing? Oops. Yank that. Paste it. What would happen if instead of that, I sent in garbage? Instead, I get, hey, pointer is null, and I receive a status of neg1. Now, I did receive uh, 17 because uh, we never readjusted it, but I could easily fix that by going back to our main function, and I could adjust our value you know, up here somewhere. But then I would have to split up if, because I would have to make sure val isn't also null, um, but in my case, I'm just going to leave it as is um, because we know based on our results that we can't trust this because we received neg1 back, right? So that's a good check. We check our status code that we received. If it was not zero, well, then we know we can't trust the value that's currently in val, okay? So again, we still know something went wrong and that's the important part. All right. So uh, if we go back to our list, that's pretty much uh, what we covered is our pass by reference, pass by value. Passing by reference is often more efficient because I'm not passing in this huge chunk of data. Instead, I'm passing a memory address that points to that data. Um, in the case of our array, it automatically did that. It passed in, um, instead of grabbing all of these values, it grabbed, you know, because uh, under the hood, the array is already just a memory address, we get the memory address. But we could have have an object that's really large. Um, and so again, you'll want to pass it by reference. Um, if we want to update a value back in our calling function, we might pass by reference as well, okay? And so we did that with val. 
And then you may not know how many elements an array has during compilation. So we found out that, um, you know, even though we could use the size of operator in our main function, where we, def where we basically uh, built our array, we can't do that outside of our main function. So we're gonna have to, you know, do some other things like passing in the number of elements uh, to make sure we know what's going on. And uh, the last thing I wanna leave you with is just that whenever you receive a pointer or something like that, just be leery of reaching right into it. Instead, you might wanna do some type of check to make sure that what you received is a, is a valid uh, address, that it points somewhere before you try to reach into it uh, and dereference it and find out uh, it was in fact null and now you have a segmentation fault, your program has crashed, right? So I hope this is useful to you. Uh, you'll end up, uh, as you, you know, write more and more of your own functions, you'll find that you end up having to pass by reference because you wanna uh, change its value or you end up passing by reference so that you can also return some type of status code with your function so that you know that your function executed correctly. All right, so that wraps it up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.